black 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 If you promote, don't smoke weed. Do a lot of pills. Our event is pristinely organized. Nick's going crazy. I'm gonna go hand out flyers and pump this party out and promote as much as I can. If all of these events go well, it'll be a movie. <laughs> Michael, ready? This thing has been through war and back. Good content? Good content? Outstanding. I have to get it pop, a sexy style. You know what I mean? It's all good. Welcome to Miami, bitch. This is it. It's going to be a good night. I think it's going to build. There's a good momentum. People are having fun. I love it. So we lost six thousand dollars last night. Fucking fix it. No, and you're not going to talk to me like that. I want what I was promised. When you're in this business, friends have expiry dates, man. Hi. Hey, this is bad. We made nothing on this event. That club is the worst management I've ever seen in my life. Not cool, bro. Calm as a bitch. Basically, he can go fuck himself because I don't give a shit about him. We got robbed by the actual venue that we're doing four more events with. We can never prove it. I was depending on an investor. Your right investor did not have nothing come to do with it. We're here now. We canceled yesterday. Calm the fuck down. This is your responsibility. This is your shit. I'm 3,000 miles away from home. You say, I want this. Take, 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 take. You keep going and going and How going. How many people have I done with the shoe brought to me? Do we know where the rest of our team is right now? They saw the cops. The hotel has called the police? Yes. Do not tell my mom.com. What is up, everybody? My name is James D. Fury, and this is Blackballed. Well, um, back in the day, I met a guy at a train station who was wandering around aimlessly looking for a cigarette. And everyone was saying no to this person. And he, he just looked like he was having a rough day. And I had in my pocket a pack of smokes. And he didn't know that I had a pack of smokes. And when he went to walk by me, I held my pack out and it hit him in the chest. And I was just like, just take one, dude. You look like you could use a cigarette. And he took one and I, we rode the train to Toronto. And long story short, um, about two weeks later, he became my roommate and, um, he, about, you know, three months later, he became my business partner and years later I was the MC at his wedding and he is one of my best friends ever. And if I didn't offer that stranger a cigarette at the train station in Pickering, uh, this movie would never have been made synchronicity. It's an interesting thing. And the reason why is because when I moved in with him, he happened to live with somebody who was considered one of the biggest promoters, not just in Toronto, but in Canada, in the rave scene, in the electronic music scene. Before it was called EDM. I refuse to call it that. It's just the way I am. And we started, and I started working with them, throwing nightclub events, uh, I guess from the year 2000 to 2006, 2007, something like that. And one day, um, he called me, uh, it was 2008 and said, I'm moving to LA. Would you like to come? And I'm like, yeah, sure. And then three, three hours later, I was at the Buffalo airport with my laptop bag <clears throat> and my carry on. I say carry on. It's like this torn up piece of shit, duffel bag. And, um, 
another three or four hours later, whatever it is, I was in Los Angeles. And when I arrived, I got to, I was in the airport. <clears throat> I thought it was weird that my cab driver was, um, was this Russian guy who, um, who was like belting back shots out of his or sips out of his flask while he was driving me. And I, we were like the only people, my buddy was like the only guy to live in, in downtown Los Angeles. If you've ever been to LA, if you've ever lived in LA, nobody lives in downtown Los Angeles. They all live on the outskirts where it makes sense. But my buddy lived in downtown Los Angeles on Spring Street. And it was because he, he managed, uh, uh, he worked for a corporation that owned a bunch of nightclubs. He managed these nightclubs, or at least he, he booked the talent for these nightclubs. I wrote the press releases <clears throat> and I basically handled, like, I was a problem solver. Um, I talked to people on the phone. I closed deals and stuff like that. But um, for all intents and purposes, that's why I was there. And then he had the opportunity to go and throw three of, or a bunch of events at the Winter Music Conference in Miami. For those who don't know, the Winter Music Conference in Miami is like the biggest music conference or was back in the day um, for electronic music. And it was an ambitious bunch of events. Um, but we ran into, <laughs> we ran into some problems. And when I say we ran into some, pro some problems, we ran into a million problems and they were all the worst kind of problems that you could ever have. So we brought a videographer with us. Uh, we brought my boy E class, um, from New York down with us and we assembled this little team and we were going to throw these amazing events. And then our money fell through. And I'm playing spoiler a little bit because um, we just said, fuck it, let's just, see, let's just see if we can do it like dummies. So long story short, <clears throat> the week of events happens. We brought the videographer, by the way, to film behind the scenes footage. We were going to interview DJs and just sell that shit to like digital outlets that, you know, we're at. WMC anyways, we had access to all these different artists and we were going to make the most of it until the shit started to hit the fan. And then a light bulb went up above my head and I was just like, fuck this. We're not going to sell any of this footage. <laughs> we can barely eat. But I thought to myself, this would make a dope documentary. And long story short, that's not possible now, but we did. We made a documentary called We Run Shit. We run shit as a play on words. It is not to suggest for one second that we ran anything. Um, what we did is we ran ourselves ragged and um, we, we could have got hurt, as you'll see. Um, I, we were threatened with lawsuits. In fact, just inviting one of my co-stars on the documentary onto this podcast, he quickly, sc he quickly scrambled to send... Um, emails to certain individuals certain celebrities like paris hilton and black eyed peas and a bunch of electronic music djs stating that he didn't support the screening of the documentary which i think is weak um because um he he says that we didn't get releases for all of them but he's mistaken because in the dim dimly <laughs> lit nightclub that we were using um, we did have a release form that basically stated anyone that walks in, you're, you, you could be in this movie. And according to our lawyer, that was fine. So here's what I want to do. Um, I'm going to play part one of the documentary that I produced. I wrote, I starred in, and I'm using air quotes because, you know, <laughs> there was no acting. There, there, there was no starring. Um, in fact, this, this doesn't shine a very good light on me at all, in a way. But as I said in the, I, I just tweeted something before, this is a quick video where, you know, I think that you should own your failures. I think that, I, I also believe that if you experience a failure, uh, nine times out of 10, you will find that within that failure, you can find something that can turn it into a success. And I think that, uh, well, we won, we won a bunch of awards um, for the documentary. Um, we couldn't get it, uh, we couldn't get a digital deal. We were this close with Netflix 
until the errors and em errors and emissions phase kicked in, which is basically like insurance for your movie. And no insurance company wanted to want us to hook us up uh, with with insurance um, because of all the the threatening lawsuits. Also, it's worth noting that the club owner was an ex Mossad agent um, who, as you will see in the documentary, was not someone you really wanted to fuck with. And uh, and yeah, and by the way, um, the the purpose of me showing this is not to like say, well, what a great documentary. It's probably a two star documentary. I don't know, but it seems to have an effect on people when they watch it, where they're like really stressed. In fact, I wanted to do this spoof ad. I didn't have time today, but um, where it's like, we run shit brought to you by Valium because you might need one after you're done watching this. I'm going to um, let it play, but I'm going to like pop in and out here and there just to, give you a little bit of background um if you guys find that annoying uh where i come in and give a little background just let me know in the chats and i'll stop doing that otherwise you know it's going to be playing for about 45 minutes but i think i will pop in and you guys just let me know if uh if i should stop doing that so anyway so here's part one of the documentary feature we run shit I do not want this on. Cut! There was a big part of me that wonders why we even went through with it at all. A professional would have just packed it in. We should have packed it in. It was one poor business decision after another. We went along for our own little ride and it ended up hurting a lot of people. Do we know where the rest of our team is right now? She emailed me threatening me to get people to come after me. They're breaking the law. If this was just 15 years ago, these people would be on life support. Everything that could have gone wrong, that went wrong. This is your responsibility. This yeah. is your shit. My credibility is shot a lot right now. My other investor, basically just someone that's not as savory as you'd like. He's coming back. He's now wanting his money. As a man, I'm about my motherfucking business. It's gonna be rammed. It's gonna be like 17, 1800 people. Our event is pristinely organized. There'll probably be a shitload of drugs. That club is the worst management I've ever seen in my life. Fuck them. We get another venue, we make it the fuck happen. We got robbed by the actual venue? This is bullshit. The hotel has called the police. But I'm not done saying what the fuck I was trying to Call say. Call the fuck down. Don't talk to me like that. Shut the fuck up. Not cool, bro. Calm as a bitch. It's been nothing but drama from day one. gonna make a lot of money with events unless you have a big bankroll behind you but you know you can make a decent living every time you open the doors and, and try to give people what they want right here on south beach it's no other way to do it than be Mathflower creative group is basically an events production company this was actually named after me uh, my last name is DeFiore, which is italian for flower and i get angry a lot We've been promoters, we've been producers. And when we do events, it's a little bit different than your typical promotions company. It's an environment that we create. People always remember Mad Flower events. We were excited to be throwing five events during Winter Music Conference, even though we weren't sanctioned by them. We were doing a series of events called Mash Appeal. We were mashing all of these genres together in an attempt to try to get the more eclectic fans to come see our events. So we thought we would have a little bit of an edge on the other promoters and event producers that were at WMC. trying to just make people happy. In the 
electronic music industry, most promoters that are promoting today were probably raving 10 or 15 years ago. It's sort of like it fulfills a dream for them in a sense because they go to these parties, they experience something that almost changes them when they're a fan and when they're an enthusiast. And this is what it was like for Nico, especially. You then want to be the person that provides that experience for the new generation of club goers. Email me the list. We'll make sure that the guests get in that are supposed to get in. As a promoter, you can still sort of experience a little bit of that magic when the business goes well, because that means that you're happy. And if you're happy, then you give a shit whether or not the crowd is happy. I just want to point out <clears throat> that during the interview <laughs> that you're looking at right now, I was on a lot of blow. Okay. Yeah, I want everybody here at the venue now. There's nothing to do at the hotel. Everybody needs to be here right now. Like every single person. Nico's the lead man in our crew and he's responsible for artist bookings and all the financials. Go Blue Team, go! He's thrown like 150 events with celebrities and worldwide DJs. Kind of like a legendary events producer. I love this shit. Oh. E-Class is our Bronx, New York native and he's our streetwise director of intangibles. That's what I call him anyways. He's good natured persona as an asset to the team, and let's face it, he's black. I'm no black, I'm Dominican. That basically gives whiteys like me and Nico a bit more credibility. I don't care what anyone says, it's true. You could try spending time in Miami without having a black dude in your entourage, and then add a guy like E Class, well, it's a whole different story. We refuse to lose. Bring it on, bitches. People back at home call me odd. I'm from Toronto, I'm a journalist an MC, and a perennial underachiever with a silver tongue. If you promote, you don't smoke weed, but you do a lot of pills. <laughs> My job is to help Nico produce the events. I write all the materials associated with the events and the web content, and I basically spearhead the strategy when dealing with the assholes in the scene. Yo, Nick, did you hear what's going on? I have to talk to him in the next like three minutes, so what do you want me to say? I fucking hate dealing with incompetence. Every city's got a kid like Ariel Rivera. I don't give a shit about anyone. Really, I don't. I don't give a fuck. A thick New York accent, a can't-lose attitude, and a fearless habit of telling stories that can never be verified. I gotta go meet Uncle Prince right now. I'll be back. That's pretty cool. I have nothing to say. I don't know what the fuck to say right now. We were living in Los Angeles. E-Class was in New York, and some guy just latched onto him. I think he was impressed with the way that E-Class sort of handled himself in the scene and the different players that he knew and the different celebrities that he was engaged with. On his own accord, this investor said, I'll give you $20,000 as an investment for this series of events. So we had made a decision to go forward based on that $20,000. So we hopped on a plane from Los Angeles to Miami. Off we went, we started to work. All the pieces started coming together. We forged partnerships with traffic events and with grassroots who manage the Black Eyed Peas. We had a plan, we had financing that was coming in. We were taking advantage of the crowd that goes to Miami during conference. There's 250,000 people there, so we were virtually guaranteed a good turnout. We had a centralized venue. Rio They come here for like five things. The music, the coke, the E, the pussy and the cut. And that's the only reason why they're here. And they converge, like 250,000 maniacs get here. It's a one big MDMA cocaine commune that lives in South Beach for a week. It's, it's crazy. These people don't sleep. They'll take a power nap that was nestled by a beer after four hits of E uh, in the afternoon. And then they'll get up and they'll just do the whole thing again. And that's this. We may have broken the very first rule of doing business in the club scene, which is never count your chickens before they hatch. It's true, we did go to the bank five times, and we did expect every time we went to the bank to see $20,000 in that account. When we finally got to the point where this guy's fucking with us, we had a decision to make, and I still don't know to this day if we made the right decision or not. We had this one moment, I'll never forget the look on Nico's face. He asked me, he's like, do you wanna go forward? Do you wanna do it? I sort of turned it around back on him, and I'm like, well, do you want to do it? You know, we have no money. Like, what do we do? And I don't know how it happened, but mutually, we were like, yeah, fuck it, the show must go on. If we pulled the plug, then thousands of people would have been disappointed and, and without an event. So we kind of took it on our own shoulders and, and really kind of put our reputations on the line. This thing has been through war and back. 
Good content? Good content? Outstanding. I can already tell it's gonna be dope. We had our work cut out for us. One of our partners runs a magazine called Two Mundos, which is like a bilingual magazine based out of Washington, D.C., and Miami. We were staying at one of their condos, and we had no real office, so we had to take... Uh, I'm, I'm just popping in for a second because I think <clears throat> the director and the animator, it's a good time to freeze frame it, actually. Uh, Scott Storm looks like he might be joining us. I just want to like give him props for the animation. I mean, like... It's fun looking at yourself in cartoon form, um, but he is so good. Um, he he has produced uh, a bunch of animated shorts. Um, I think the next one that he's doing right now is probably going to be nominated for um, an Oscar. And um, and I'm hoping right now his browser is not cooperating for some reason, but I'm hoping he's going to join us soon. His name is Scott Storm. He is one of my best friends. Um, I met him through the course of making the movie. And um, and yeah, he's just a dope editor uh, and a dope animator. So hopefully he'll come on soon. Oh, there he is. I'm going to see if I can uh, if I, I'm going to play the movie and then I'm going to talk to him backstage and see if we can get him on. Take all of our files down to the Kinko's one day in order to get all of our files in order for the flyer. So we go to the Kinko's and I'm sitting at a booth beside Nico and on the other side of me is this lady and she had this dog and I love just like animals of all kinds. So this dog's jumping on me and everything. I'm like, oh, he's a puppy. You're the puppy. Yes, you are. And the lady looks over and she has a, like a, this British accent. The accent reminds me of what if Oliver Twist was a girl and the ending was tragic? So we're talking and she's asking us what we're doing. We show her our flyer and she's like, oh, these events look amazing. So I told her we need hotels. So we're looking for a hotel sponsor. She says, well, I'm staying over at the hotel i had never heard of it because i'm from canada and we have like motel sixes and shit like that so she says that she's gonna pull some strings so she's like what can you do for me and nico says well we can just expose your brand some like a hot yoga you know project your logo at the event and everything so she bites and a day later she calls us she's like i just slapped fifteen thousand dollars down in hotel rooms for your crew for your performers for your djs and we just we're just like holy fuck the Yola ride begins, and we've been here for 11 days, and none of this would have happened if I didn't stop and profess my love for the cute little puppy inside the Kinkos. Now, we are technically not allowed to mention the hotel in this film, but let's just say this. It is considered to be the standard as far as hotels in South Beach are concerned, especially when it comes to luxury spas. We need to check our emails. Man. Dude, my battery died. It's charging. My battery. Look. Everything's dead. Holy fuck. Okay. Yola gave us an 11th hour reprieve and saved us from not just canceling, but never doing an event in the country again. It all depends on this week. This week of events that we're doing, Mash Appeal. If all of these events go well, we just need to figure out the next steps. Yo, I got this. Yeah, yeah, nice going on. So happy you're here, bro. Seriously. Dude, we got the family here, man. That's what I said. It can't even happen without the family here. Having the family together is just key, key component. I'm gonna kiss your ring. Fuck yeah. you. You know where you can put that ring. Our event is considered to be like pristinely organized right now compared to like so many <laughs> other events. Cause you events. that boy in charge, baby. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? I met Nick in the year 2000. I didn't even know what a rave was. He sort of took me under his wing and he was throwing events. I had met him through a mutual friend. And Mad Flower creative group kind of spawned out of the rave scene. We started doing marketing and branding. We weren't pop culture. We were sort of the more hip underground that the corporate world could sort of latch itself onto. We've thrown some pretty impressive events. When we have our shit together, the events are tight. They're well oiled. Did I tell you about our penthouse hospitality suite? We're Both doing this penthouse hospitality suite at the top level of the brand new boutique hotel, Will I Am DJing, Friday from 2 to 7 p.m. We're gonna have like Paris Hilton, Nikki Hilton, Flo Rida, Will, Fergie, Akon. I need three conscious MCs and I have none right now. Because all the MCs that are known that are conscious cost too much money, right? Like. We've 
done it in Canada once, but I'm unveiling it. This is like the American premiere uh, happening at WMC this year at Dolce. Who would consider doing it just for a flight in a hotel? I mean, it's gonna be rammed. It's gonna be like 17, 1800 people. Plus, we've already started selling tickets online. I want tickets. And as it looks right now, it's gonna be a sold out show. The odd manic. That's gonna be sick. We'll just figure it out. I'm just, I'm multitasking here. Don't hustle Please, and sir. drive, man. Which liquor sponsor can he lock down? Sponsors are tricky ever since 2007 because the economy tanked. You know, sponsors want to return on their investment. We had started making calls when we were still in Los Angeles and there was one company, Nouveau. It was like a pink liquor. E-Class remembered that he had a contact that was higher up than anybody that we had spoken with yet. This dude, like, he's ready to go. His company is handling it, I guess, for down here. Fuck, I don't know how to drive. Just got off the phone. Uh -huh. VP of marketing of Nouveau. I love Nouveau it. Nouveau is love back it. on track. I love it. Tomorrow morning, we're going to know if they're in for $12,000. It's all good. Wait, wait, hold on. I told you. Sponsors are like the biggest cock teases in the world because they feign their interest and they say that we love what you're doing and the next day came and we called them, they never returned our call and we just didn't talk to them ever again. So that 12 grand, it, it wasn't even close. It was probably never close to happening. You know, we still had no money at that point. We had Nikki and Paris Hilton at Nikki Beach Club. Finally locked down, winter music conference. Dude, that's Saturday. a, that's a way. <laughs> you got us? Uh, we I have 15 street team people ready to pass out flyers and they don't have fucking pieces of paper in their hand. Well, and we have no flyers. Last night Marcelo promised me tonight I would have 5,000 of each. It's actually kind of rare that the partner that you have in promotions is also your printer. Two Mundos were actually the middleman. They were not the company that printed the flyers. They didn't tell us this. They blamed us for not paying them. We had paid our deposit. You know, usually that's enough, but they basically held the flyers hostage. Like, Friday night out here is the main fucking night, dude, and these guys are fucking around with us. I'm pissed. We're basically down $10,000 because we have nothing to promote with tonight. Out of nowhere. Welcome to WMC. There he is. Okay. I would like to introduce Scott Storm, ladies and gentlemen. Scott is the... Hey, first of all, how you doing, buddy? Doing good. I'm afraid my voice is a little out because I shouted at a driver today and it completely blew oh. my voice. But, what, uh, what did you say? I don't even remember. <laughs> it's just nonstop stupidity living in LA. Um, so I, I've, I've played like 20 minutes of the film so far. Scott, just to let everyone know, um, <clears throat> literally like say... He basically made the film happen. Um, <clears throat> I may have had the bright idea when we were in Miami to, to, to make a documentary because we were failing at so many of the things. But Scott um, edited it. Scott animated it. Scott directed it. Um, and literally, guys, he's the reason that, that the film even exists. Um, and probably... What, you think it took maybe six to eight years off your life in total, maybe? Something like that? I certainly hope not. <laughs> um, it was a brutal run, though. Like, what, like I mean, we, it, it didn't, the lack of organization, <laughs> the lack of organization didn't stop in Miami. Um, but, you know, um, there we were, uh, it, it, you know, w once the dust settled. And uh, and went back to uh, to Scott to sort of like figure out what we were going to do with it next. And you just kind of like you and I worked together like for hundreds and hundreds of hours. Like yes, we still we, hadn't met. Yeah, that's right. We didn't meet until Phoenix Film Festival when we won Best Documentary for this film. That is true. Um, can you give can you give the people your impression of, of what it was like to make this movie? Because you weren't there in Miami. So it was interesting. I think that's why it worked almost in a way, right? Like you weren't too close to like the actual footage. In True. The I mean, you I watched all the footage. Everything was there. I was asked by a friend to help with this. Uh, and <clears throat> I was so interested because I knew nothing about the club scene or anything like that. Uh, and I was like, great. Unfortunately, making the film cost me that friendship, which... Yeah happens in Hollywood all the time. 
unfortunately. Yeah. Uh, but I had a great time doing it. It was like a two and a half year process, I think. I had just become a father for the third time uh, and had That's a right. baby at home. <laughs> Uh, but luckily my office was across the hall from the condo we lived in. It's a very weird condo. It's a 150 square foot room with a bathroom. And that's where I did the editing, uh, whenever I could scrape time, because of course nobody got paid, uh, which no. is kind of the way it works with indie movies, uh, very often. So yeah, doc documentaries, especially right. Well, it was my first documentary that I was that involved in official rejection was not my movie. I was just in it and I did animation for it and I co-produced, but I had never actually been that involved in the making of a documentary before. So I was just right. sort of blind, blind with it. Um, <clears throat> I was telling, uh, I was telling the audience before you came on that you're, you do animated shorts. Um, and, and the one that you're working on right now, I'm really excited about, um, but your release date is always so far away because you do this painstakingly slow, but awesome process, right. With all of your films. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, it's for some stupid reason, I'm not satisfied just doing flat color with with, you know, 2D animation. Even Disney just does basic colors unless there's a fire going or something. But yeah. I sort of shade everything like the shadow and the light, everything, because to me, that's how I see it in my head. And it's ridiculous because you can work weeks just doing one shot, sometimes a month or two. Depends yeah. on how long it is, how many frames it is. So um, the movie has been cut. It's picture locked. It's being scored by Joe Kramer right now. The sound designer is doing his thing, although I haven't heard from him in weeks. And, I say, and just for the people who don't know, Joe Kramer is like, he's not, he's now become a big name, right? Like he does. Um, yes, he Tom did Mission Impossible, Rogue Nation. He did Jack Reacher. Right. Uh, so so uh, you're listening, by the way, guys, the person that scored our film is that guy is Joe Kramer, who who does who now does Mission Impossible movies and things like that. So <laughs> we got him. We got him just before he blew up, didn't we? Yeah, well, we grew up together. So it was it was. Oh, easy. and he was the star of some of my early films. He was an actor. And then when we finished shooting, he said, hey, my dad has a composing setup at home. Can I write the music to your film? I was like, well, sure. Um, and we've been doing that ever <laughs> since, like since he was 12. So wow. long time. Um, I'm going to play more of the film. We're going to talk a little bit backstage here. I'm going to see how long you can stay for, and then uh, we'll we'll go from there. Okay. Uh, Lewis is now texting after agreeing on the phone that Will I am will DJ up on the penthouse for the hospitality suite that uh, Will is now not confirmed, but he has Jogger and Daedalus that will play. What's the sound check? How many pieces bang? Would they have to see the venue? They're flying in from out of town. So well, how many pieces bang? I texted you. Two. Two pieces bang. And, and what the other girl is just singing to a track. Okay, that track is no problem. And the uh, band, what, what is the uh, name? I don't like to listen. Oh, damn it. So how, when can we open the venue? Don't worry. Tell me for what? I've got 10 more people that are about to come. What? To see the venue, to, to, to the other designers coming in from out of town, to see, see they've never seen the venue, so they have to see it. She's singing? No, she's not. So, the, the what host is, is not singing. She's hosting. Who's, uh, There's someone to stop. 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 So, you asked me to be on the Well, right now we have a little bit of a problem. We've arranged for a meeting at the venue on the day of the event, and the owner just came here and said that he forgot his keys, and he lives 45 minutes away. He doesn't seem too eager to go and get them because he doesn't feel that there is a reason to meet at the venue on the day of the event so that the fashion people can go over the production for the fashion show. There's two of them, so we can do sound check. It's not looking good right now. I have to get a pop, it's sexy style. You know what I mean? I just want to see if you could help us with our promotional push today, you know, just getting people to come out to the event tonight. I appreciate it. Let's all come together and make it a success. Nick's going crazy. He's on the phone. He's doing his emails. Eric needs to go back to the room and get ready and waste everybody else's time. I'm going to go hand out flyers and pump this party out and promote as much as I can, so. Well, do you want to go and change so that we don't have to I leave can't, again? I can't leave. I've got models coming in 20 minutes here. About 20 of them. Can we go and change? If you want. Okay. Let's go and change. Seriously. <laughs> Dude, 
he's in like a mood. He won't let anyone in at all. Because he's like, he just doesn't want people in and out and stuff before the thing starts. But like, it's no problem if they have bracelets on. And we're about two hours away from the event opening. Nick is in here, he's probably fighting with his girlfriend. Marcelo, who's our minority partner for the event, is giving me a hard time on the VIP bracelets. Now I'm sitting here a little stressed out. I don't have any drink tickets because I'm afraid what will happen when I ask for them. I'll probably get drunk by the time we open. We're doing our party. Tonight is the runway models. I think it's a Brazilian underwear party. And now I'm going to go and figure out what other problem we have. Oh, I know, a cash box. We don't have a cash box. I don't know. What's up, everybody? This is Nico Bacigalupo of Mad Flower Creative Group. Here we are backstage at the Two Mundos magazine and Mad Flower presentation of Sexy Glam, it's Winter Music Conference, Miami Fashion Week. Beautiful. That's all you gotta say. All right, that's cool. So you know what? When we come back, it's gonna be even hotter, and it's gonna get crazier, and it's gonna be more girls, and gonna be more people, and the party's just gonna rock. I, I just, I just want to, I just want to say <clears throat> that we know how bad the lighting was. <laughs> okay, it was really bad. It's a wrap. This event failed, man. It fucking failed. Didn't have a crowd. Didn't have anything. About 15 minutes ago, I came back to check on the girl that we had working at the door and she wasn't there. The person that told her to walk away was our partner on the event that didn't think to put another person at the door when they told her to leave because they needed her backstage. They didn't need shit. Her friend that was standing there the whole time saw a security from the fucking club looting through the register like it was fucking Christmas. I don't know how they knew how much our float was, but they literally looted our cash to the dime, to the cent of what we put in there for our change when we got here. The security and the manager of the club He's trying to tell me that nobody paid. Now we know at day one that we've got a problem with the establishment. The establishment is the one that's gonna rip us off. And we've been warned. We were warned before we came here. We thought I had our aces covered. We made nothing on this event, nothing. We have four more events, man. Four more events, and this is what we have to put up with for four more events? This is bullshit. I'm sorry. But if you ever meet up with that guy, like if, if you ever meet that James, just just walk away. <laughs> <laughs> just walk away. We all have. Four more events. Four more events. <laughs> it sound like Stallone's bastard. Like, who the fuck am I? <laughs> you know, it's weird for me because I don't drink anymore. And so whenever I see footage of me, because there's a bunch of footage of me like in the world, and whenever I see footage of me where I'm clearly drinking, I'm just like... Oh, fuck. <laughs> and there, I know that I was drunk and that just before the camera was rolling, I just, like, did a gigantic rip. And so I'm just like, big establishment. Fuck establishment. You're going to get it. And it was just not a good look for Jamesy. So yeah. don't, don't do drugs, ladies and gentlemen. And, and try not to drink unless you can handle your three fingers of scotch every night, like, like Mr. Scotty oh, yeah. here. Oh yeah. yeah. And and I have never done hard drugs in my life, so there you go. That's right. I have so many friends like you. Like and it's really weird because I don't you know, usually birds of a feather. My drug was filmmaking. I didn't need anything else. Oh, look at so. you, the consummate artist. I love it. <laughs> yeah, okay. but we all have our own journey and uh, and stuff like that and here you are now. Nice. I I see you coming on this thing every day on uh, Facebook and I'm like, how does he keep up with all that? It's, it's gotta be somebody who likes to talk. I don't. Yeah, I certainly, I certainly like to talk. It's yeah. both the, um, the best thing and worst thing about me. Well, <laughs> you're you know? awfully knowledgeable dude. So uh, it's, oh, I appreciate that. You can do that day after day and it's really entertaining stuff and informative. Well, I appreciate that. I wasn't expecting that. Thank you, Scott. Thank sure. you. So we're going to go back to the doc. We're going to come back. Cause listen, um, 
we're going to just end this at, at maybe an hour, hour and 15. Scott, whenever you need to jam, just let me know and we'll come back for five I'll minutes. Let you know. and talk I'm about watching it. the email. They even said I can push till tomorrow with this if I want to. So I'll just say, hey, I want to push till tomorrow. So we'll see. Okay, awesome. And I, I saw someone in the comments say that um, that maybe what I'm doing is, is a little unorthodox and different, but you kind of like it. If, if, if you guys like this kind of thing, like I know that there's like, uh, what is it, Fight Companion? UFC does that. Like I think Joe Rogan does something where it's like the fight will be playing and they'll be talking about the fight that's playing. Mm. I didn't, I, I just didn't want it to be so static where it was just a documentary for 45 minutes and then tomorrow the documentary for four. So I thought it'd yeah. be interesting to like come in. But if it ever disrupts the flow of the movie, guys, feel free to like bitch me out and I'll feel free to ignore you or, or, or listen to you. I don't know yet. We'll, we'll figure it out. Okay. I've done winning music conferences the last seven years. It sucks to fail at them, but dude, you gotta- Last time it. I did an event, I had 3,000 people. What do you keep looking at me for? You're hovering. I'm not hovering. I'm halfway out the fucking door. Bro, you got an itch, bro. You better scratch and get over hey, it. Hey, Brandon, what's going on? Seriously, bro, this happens all the time in this business. I am on the computer trying to make sure that it doesn't happen to our next event. Positive attitude. Keep that negative shit somewhere else. Okay, perfect. We got lucky. You know, at the 11th hour, we did have an investor who finally came through. I've never known $10,000 to be spent so quickly. We were so far behind that it was gone within 24 hours just in artist bookings and flights and deposits. It came at the exact right time for it to come. Uh, if it didn't come, we would have folded. Let's look at the scenario right now. Sunday and Tuesday were gonna be the slow days. It might be best if we cancel Tuesday. The issue is, is that our partners for that event are traffic events, and they really want to push it, and they've got a guest list from AM only, which manages all the DJs. I would cancel Tuesday and go full force with everything else. Why aren't we fucking, like, being smart people here? If we're gonna cancel, why are we gonna cancel? Tuesday is what, March 1? We've just given up 20,000 flyers. <laughs> With that data. Hey, hey, you know what my main objective was? To pass them out, not to fucking read them. Oh, okay, so here, come to my party. Oh, dude, who's the headliner? Who's the headliner? Fucking no, Look at the gonna... fucking flyer. It's in front of your face. I mean, wow, if you can't head, read it. This is our head flyer guy. I cannot stress enough how fucking mad I was at that man. <laughs> What's the date on the flyer that you're passing out? Uh yeah, yes. <clears throat> I did. I told you the story that I was walking on La Brea Avenue when we were about to premiere at Phoenix, and I walked right by him. He was there. Ariel, Ariel walked right by me on the street. Luckily, he didn't know who I was. In Phoenix? No, no, no. In L.A. Oh, oh, really? Yeah. Just I before you went to Phoenix? Work. I was taking a walk from work. I was just getting food or something, and I'm like. Holy shit. This guy that I've been working, his image, I've been working with his image for two years, walked right by me. And uh, I knew he had been very negative about us playing in Phoenix and causing all sorts of problems. And Well, he came away from the movie thinking that he didn't look very good. And I was just like, how the fuck did you expect to look good? Like, <laughs> like you threw our flyers in the garbage. Oh, I'm, I'm playing spoiler. But yeah, okay. It's all good. I'll shut up. I don't like Ariel, everyone. It's not yeah. a surprise. Bastard. Whatever. This is where we fight. What would you should we do this or should I if we cancel to go full things? screen again? You can go full screen. It's up to you. Um, yeah, I, I really can't go along with that. You know, I mean, I mean, I put myself out there. If we cancel too, they were still gonna owe money, man. Right. If I cancel it, my reputation is out the door. Okay, um, I can understand that. You know, our overhead for the night is only like 400 people. We kept our costs. Honestly, this is not a reflection on you, obviously, at all. I'm just running this by you. This is just us trying to figure out what makes the most sense. You guys cancel it. It's no skin off your guys' back. Actually, that's not true. I just want to let you know, though, that this is not something we take lightly. We have five events. If it's not a success tomorrow, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday is going to be totally destroyed. If you take a look at our week, we're still in for thousands of dollars when you take venue costs and hotel costs. Were there a lot of other parties going on that did well? No. Okay, so it's everything. Yes. But we got a disaster. We got a package deal because we had all these events. It's going to cause a domino effect of other things. Thursday's Modest Yahoo and Eat the Beat. There's enough buzz. And Friday's, you know, a given. I know everyone's getting their panties in a bunch about last night. I'm just saying, in my, from my perspective, I don't think it's that big of a deal. We leave late tonight, so we're in small, like around 2 o'clock. It's Sunday night before conference, you know what I mean? It's a clusterfuck. I'm going to run into a meeting right now. I'll be out within an hour. 
about to go to one of the nicest boutique hotels in Miami. Suites with kitchens, and we're gonna go make some pasta because I'm fucking tired of spending all this money on food. Fucking $12 burritos and $6 fries. Miami sucks for food, man. Wow! Marcelo. What are you? I'm in the room having a meeting. 218. 218. Okay, I'll be there. Okay. Before Marcelo got there, we got word that he wasn't going to give us our flyers that we needed to promote because we hadn't made a second payment yet. We thought it was pretty ballsy after him fucking up our night so badly on the Sunday. So we lost like $6,300 last night. The owner of Dolce is really, really upset. We're all ready to cancel, right? Is it killed as of now as far as time is concerned? Yes. Okay. It's a crazy owner. Like you said, it wasn't killed by you. Over it, move on. Yeah. Move on to the next event. That's going to be a really big thing. The main ones we're concentrating on are Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. The management at that club is the worst management I've ever seen in my life. They don't even know how to run the club. So he's not going to allow anyone in the door Wednesday night until we hit like at least 200 people outside. Everybody gets in on Wednesday. They're all at the hotels. If you do smart, if we do the wristband thing, show people the flyers. It's $20, sure. $10 sure. off. You can encourage people to come in, cut your cost at the door, and really try to make more money by getting people in there. It's a volume game. The rule of thumb is that for every 10,000 flyers that you give out to your average event, your return will be like 2%. To get 200 people at your club, you need to hand out 10,000 flyers. There's still the main way to tell people what's going on. It creates a word of mouth. Hey, what's up? <laughs> what's up? Hey, what's up? Hey, Good. So what's the deal with the flyer? He's definitely not giving them to us? Huh? The flyers, we're not getting them from him tonight then? We have no flyers tonight? That's the thing with my partner. He won't release me unless I get a second payment. But they're printed. They're keeping them hostage in the warehouse. Yeah, they are in the warehouse. I, I only sell one payment. I've been doing events for 14 years. I've never had so many problems with a printer, ever. You have to pay up front. We know that. We all know that. Two Mundos, uh, specifically Jeanette and Marcelo, they need to take accountability for the fact that they did not fill the venue last night. That was their responsibility. I'm not a Latin promoter. I don't even do Latin events. The bottom line is that they have a better shot at getting their money if they give us the flyers. And they want to keep the rest of the flyers hostage. That's not what he just said right now. Yeah. Come on, B. Like, we need those flyers? Do we need these flyers? Yeah, dude, they're the, the mash appeal flyers. It was a little bit tense, but E-Class used his charm and was able to secure the flyers for us. We don't even know what he did. He talked to him one-on-one, -on -one, and you know, it's hard to say no to E-Class. Just ask any of his exes. Hey, brother. Wait, get him with the flyers. Get him with the flyers. Show him what you got. Show him what you got. Flyers. I'm going to go distribute them right now. Exactly. Got to go do my job, huh? Yeah, I'm going to get you some flyers. It's ironic in many ways, but when he says, James, you and E-Class are my two best friends, me and you are gonna have to expect the most shit. And, and I don't know why, but that's the psychology. That's the chess game of Nick. After a while, you gotta sit back and you just gotta like let him go through it, let him cause the trauma and leave. As soon as you get up and challenge him, it, my, it's over, no, it's listen, over. Listen, he will whole, never submit to the challenge. My host, it's not even about challenging, it's just about voicing opinions. This is what we do, you know what I'm saying? I've been through stress. We're not curing cancer. We're not, it's not rocket science. I've been through problems and stress. This is cake, dogs. This is not an issue for me. A fucking venue. We can't pack the venue. The owners, fuck them. We get another venue. We do what we have to do. We make it the fuck happen. The reality is, our life is not in jeopardy. We're gonna wake up and breathe another day. Whether or not we make a dollar or not, motherfucker, I'm gonna wake up. That's what I'm saying. I'm not going crazy over this shit. And that's my choice. His choice is drama. Honestly, one of my jobs in this shit is fucking spiritual advisor, B. I keep that nigga cool and keep that nigga perspective, but don't insult my intelligence. You know where I'm coming from. Don't think I'm getting tight over this because I got other reasons to be tight about. Real, substantial reasons to really be tight. And I'm not being tight because I love. 
Let's bring this shit the fuck on, B. Let's get it popping. I am lost and loathing in a broke ass WMC. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I should be like more optimistic. We out here struggling, doing what the fuck we do, and making the best of it. You know what I'm saying? If the asshole owner wanna close the doors, you know what? We'll open shop up somewhere else. This is someone will open the door. That's simple. That's you do not have the power. We do. Probably, um, I think you would agree, E-Class, one of the most positive people I've ever met in my life. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's, he's, one, of the, he's one of the few people I wish I could be more like. <laughs> yeah. He's, yeah. Just terrific, yeah. he's going to be on tomorrow, by the way, everybody, for part two. Um, mm. Scott, you're welcome to come back, obviously. <laughs> Nick, Nico, um, Nick uh, sent, was the guy I was talking about at the beginning. Scott, you weren't it, here yet. Um, he sent a bunch of emails to a bunch of people that are in the movie saying that he doesn't agree with screening the movie because he's afraid of getting sued. Oh, well. I mean, there has to be some sort of statute of limitations or something, doesn't there? There like, is. Uh, it's, it's, I mean, we're not making, we're not monetizing it. So we're not really doing yeah. anything wrong other than possibly making people look bad. Hey, uh, listen, we put a, um, a release paper in the dimly lit nightclub that everyone had to pass <laughs> when they walked into the club. We thought it protected us. <laughs> I well, it should. You just hope you didn't have a shot of that piece of paper. We do. You well. If anyone has it, it's you, Mr. Editor. I never saw it. I never saw it. Okay. Nobody well, why don't we look? We're live, so why don't we just go back to the, <laughs> to the film? Okay. You know, because I saw because I got rid of all those flyers. Like, I mean, they, everybody's I going. Oh, this was bad. Really? Oh yeah. Oh god. I did all of Collins, and then I shot down Lincoln. <laughs> Dude, they were like nice fucking room. Like seriously. This is where the magic happens, <laughs> you know? Hello? Hey, Don, this is uh, Nico's partner, James. You guys excited for coming out, right? Real excited. Wicked. I, I'm on a broken Blackberry myself. So. Yeah, he's got a buddy that's probably going to come and get him, so we'll coordinate all that on Friday. Okay, yeah, the hours for the rooftop party are between 2 and 7. That sounds great. Hey, where did all those flowers go? You just, you gave them all away already. Yeah. I don't want to move. Oh, so there's the bit. See ya. He's dumping the flyers. I know he is. He's dumping them. They're in garbage cans all across South Beach right now. I asked you a simple question. If you can track where you go. Don't talk down to me. Don't talk down to me. I asked you a simple question. Don't talk down to me. Can you track where you go? Can you track where you go? Don't talk. I'm not talking down. I'm asking you a question. Can you track where you go? Dude. Can you track where you go? Can you? Get out of my room. Seriously, just get out. If you're not going to answer a simple question, dude, about your promotions, about your job. You're in charge of promotions. You're in charge of the people that are having promotions. So. Two thirty, two thirty-five. Yeah. Hey, Eric, I'd like you to please like tell me what stores the our flyers are. All right, you're Nick, about. I'm gonna go get some some fucking cards, and then uh, when you're done, wipe your face. Wicked. Fucking awesome. Cry, baby. Thanks, Fuck man. You. I don't have to do shit. You tell me to do. I appreciate it. Actually, you do. Actually, you do. No, I don't have to do anything. You tell well, then me. tell Nick that you no longer want to be part of the promotion. No, I'm here for Nick, not for James. Who the fuck do you think I am? I don't care. Okay. You okay. should. Okay, I just want to state for the record that the way that sounds is not how it sounds. <clears throat> I wasn't like, hey, who, who the fuck do you think I am? It wasn't like that. It was like, I am your boss, and it's, you know, like, do you think I'm, like, you're, you, well, I guess it sort of is, like, how it sounds. <laughs> but, but, but it's not like, do you know who the fuck I am? You know who the fuck I am? Like that Chicago guy, remember, at the end of the movie, Scott, that yeah. you guys will see, which is hilarious. Um, I was literally just trying to tell a guy who worked for me to go to work and he wasn't listening because he had a relationship with Nick. I just don't, didn't want that to linger there with like, do you know who the fuck I am? Cause it wasn't quite like, it was like 30% that, but not, but not the whole thing. I don't know.
Good. You could have left that out, Scott. Thanks a lot, buddy. Right. It was interesting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't. Dude, you gotta, you gotta like back that up. Seriously, you can't just sit there. I just. He just mentioned your name. Said I'm here for you. Your response should be this. Okay, then listen to him. But you know. Don't but, tell me what I should do. I said you are in charge of promotions, oh so therefore that indicates you know, to this him is like that you're his boss. This is like a fucking playhouse. It's not a playhouse, dude. They I, fucking back me up in a way where he understands. I did. Don't I just go like this. Oh, you guys should deal with it. I got to I got to type out a fucking email to Matt just Yahoo. I can't deal with this. And then when he's like references you like five times and you just sit there, it just makes us look stupid. It just makes the whole fucking thing look like a joke. Anybody watching this is probably thinking right, like these guys are completely unprofessional. So if you want me to be promotions manager and you hire someone that won't listen to me, then I'm going to fire him. You're in charge of promotions, so fire him. If you don't think he's doing his job, then fire him. Okay. He's going to come to you whining, crying for money. Can you just on him? You gotta stop drinking wine while working because you get very sensitive. The camera makes you want to feel like you're a teacher, but I know, I know all this. I know everything that you're saying. I know the context. There's another embarrassing yeah. James moment. Yes, of course. Like, you know. Here's the part where he tries to like make it seem like I'm drunk, and that's why I'm talking. James is being a little bitch, like a little baby. He keeps Fuck asking me if I got business cards. Should we do this? Can I just start like swearing at the documentary? Cards for? You put me in touch with French. He's awesome, it's by the way. Nothing but favorable time. things to say about him. He's awesome. He went to every hotel, dropped off flyers, and then brought me back the business card for every hotel and store that he had. You don't need business cards to hand out flyers. I don't care where I put them, just as long as I put them somewhere. James can say all he wants. Basically, he can go fuck himself, because I don't give a shit about him. Hey, do you know He's who the fuck I am, Ariel? in the lobby of our hotel, swearing and getting all, all hot and shit. We just got like $20,000 worth of room sponsored, and there he is right there, pretending to talk on the phone again. Look at him. That's him, pretending to work. He's walking like he's doing some shit. He's not doing anything. You're not doing anything! That is the walk of a guy who's trying to get away with something. I'm telling you, let him go, dude. Just let him go. <laughs> Did you hear what I said? So uh, Nick just told me that we can't fire him until Thursday because he's connected to the DJ that's bringing in a whole shitload of people. So we'd lose, uh, I don't know, like two, three thousand dollars if we fired him today. So we're gonna let him go on Thursday. So. I think it's worth pointing out that if, you, if you've ever been in the club scene and if you've ever like thrown big events and you um, run out of money, you are fucked <laughs> in so many ways. You are Kama Sutra just fucked. Because it's not like running out of money and then you, oh, you just get to go home. <clears throat> we had obligations to pay DJs. We had obligations even to pay that fuck, Ariel. Um, <laughs> you know, we had to, we, we, we had to like get all these hotel rooms, everything like that. Like it, it was, there's, we had no business throwing these events. Um, Scott, um, you weren't there, but it probably made your job a lot more fun um, to just piece together this complete clusterfuck into something that was like resembling a documentary guys i can't stress it enough how hard scott's job probably was because normally you have footage from like multiple cameras we had one camera and then what was it scott like how many months later did i have to start writing it and piecing it together basically by memory oh no you sent me the footage i sent you guys the footage yeah and then yeah. you had the special shoot with Michael to uh, shoot your supplemental uh, interview stuff when we sort of knew what was how it was taking shape and what we didn't have that we wish we had. And you provided it. Uh, oh, boy. What's going on here? That's right. OK, go do your thing. I'll, I'll press. No, 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 no. It's just no. Someone... Okay. OK, 
Uh, I'm still gonna press play. Cash on me. I don't have any cash on me. Not one cent. You need to stop asking me that before I lose it. Because right now, not a good time. I'm not a good move. Like, this is bad. Modest Yahoo is saying if he doesn't have all the confirmation for the hotel, then he's not going to get on the plane. Paris and Nikki Hilton, her publicist is like, you need to have a formal letter stating that Fergie's so excited. She's like, if I don't get this in the next 45 minutes, Paris won't be there. Then my designers have been stopped at the border by immigration. I have to send a letter stating that they're not going to get paid because they won't let them out of custody. Well, what's the punches? <laughs> I know we fought, we quarreled. Yeah, I know, we fought today. Like two little bitches. Yeah, it was good. It was good. And I told him to go fuck himself. <laughs> He's just saying that. We're all working together. Folding flyers, they can get some guys going and get some conscious, like, MCs for a show for the Eat the Beat thing, so. I created this concept called Eat the Beat, where conscious hip hop MCs freestyle lyrics based on these graphics on a giant screen in front of them. It was supposed to revolutionize hip hop and force MCs to come real when they freestyled. I call the concept Front Proof. Eat the Beat was and still is my baby and the main reason that I was involved from the beginning. I gotta go meet up with Prince right now. I'll be back. He's over with Eric Morello and Helen right now. So that's pretty cool. I guess now it's looking like it's coming together for the Friday gifting suite. We've confirmed Paris and Nikki Hilton, Dwayne Wade, Wyclef Jean, Fat Joe, Fergie. Let's send off this press release so we can send it to the hotel to send off to their mailing list. Come on, let's go. Oh, oh yeah. Missing in action for four hours, and how right. dare you? I went to the airport 300 miles away, right? This is where yeah, that's what I said to him. I'm like, dude, he's he, he was here for ground transportation, and I believe that's that he's done that. He's like, yeah, but he we might... work when Nick wants us to work. Yesterday, he came close to throwing my laptop out his window. Oh, no, dude, he's like, you're drunk, and I'm like, that's only half true. Okay. I ain't drunk yet, bitches. Uh oh, <laughs> I know you're taking care of your DJs, but now I've got eight DJs that are gonna show up and they have no idea when they're playing, so I gotta let them know. I'll make sure they all play. They're not gonna be in the main room. Okay, and just basically break it down. Room one, room two, and room three. This is our schedule here. Fucking Lewis and Danny are not coming today. They're coming tomorrow. So I have three extra rooms tonight. If you can work with Sharon and Kim and get them all the information they need, and I need to just really focus on tonight. Tomorrow, six people are arriving at five o'clock in the morning because they have to take a red eye. Fergie and Will Am's people. So I'll extend the car for another day, if that's what we need to do. Well, look Rental at cars are for a reason. Look at the car. <laughs> it's good. It's good. What? Look, look at the car. That, that, that's our ground transportation. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's like a Ford Focus or some shit. And that's what we had to pick up the fucking Black Eyed Peas. <laughs> and when you see the foot, I didn't go. They're like, uh, Nick's like, are you coming with me to pick up the Black Eyed Peas? And I'm like, um, absolutely not. I am not showing up to the Miami airport with a Ford Focus to pick up <laughs> all of you fucks. Like, there's not a chance in hell. And you'll see the looks on. It's it's actually the management company. And I think um, Will I Am is there, but not on camera at this point. Um, but, but if you look at their faces, uh, they're like... Um, I can't even remember what it says just now, but but he's got his arms folded and he's like, you know, hello, Miami. <laughs> but really, all he's thinking at the time is fucking we're the black eyed peas fucking forward fucking focus. <laughs> What's going on? So anyways, it's really embarrassing. I'm so happy I didn't make that trip. Anyways, off we go. That's why I invest every year to make sure we're in a fucking vehicle that it can accommodate anyone right. and everyone. I don't have money to spend $75 a day. I have to. Yesterday you said this shit about $75 a day. You know what I've done every year I've been with you. Mm -hmm. It was never an issue with me on how much money it is. Okay. 
You understand what I'm saying? So I, I felt disrespected in a sense when you came out and said that. Because at the end of the day, because, dude, because I never told you what I was paying. I heard what you're saying. You don't have money, $75 a day. And what I'm telling you is I've been in that situation numerous times with you okay. where I spent my savings to okay. accommodate everyone. I spent my savings. Not this We're not going tit for tat here. You just said, I'm taking care of you three. This is your responsibility. You told us this. You, I, I, I wasn't going to come. Okay. And you convinced me to come here and deal with this. Okay. Now that I'm here, I feel like you like... Dude, yesterday I didn't have a fucking room to go to, dog. I said, here's the spreadsheet. All right, you know what? I, I, not, I was not able to go into a room till fucking 10 o'clock in the fucking night. What? You understand? Why? When we went outside to Dude, the car this is, this and is I just... said to you, you are sharing a room with Michael. You're okay. like, okay. That's just one thing. The fact is, again. No, no, was... I'm answering that question so that you're correct and you're aware of what's going on. Now, if we want to get everything and clear and this is I was depending on the referral of an investor that was going to pay for all this. Now, so I had to go, no, now you talk, I'm going to now talk. Yo, so hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, because I'm not done saying what the fuck I was trying to tell you, B. Well, no, I want you to be No, no, but I'm not done because no. you're trying to skip the subject. I'm not right now, I'm going back to what the fuck it is. We're here, and you're bitching because we fucking asked you for I'm food, dude. There's I days that we have not eaten. We all fucking got your back. Okay, and well, you're acting like, fine. you know, this shit ain't cool, dude. I'm not, I'm this not. is your responsibility. This is yeah. your shit. Exactly. This is Nico's event. Your back investors get so nothing country. to do with it. We're here now. Well, it doesn't matter. We canceled yesterday. It doesn't have nothing to do with my fucking investor, B. It does have a lot to do with your Don't investment. give me that shit, I yo. Don't, don't give me that shit. How many people have I done with that you brought to me? Yo, Nick, man, you know what? I'm wrong, B. You right. Okay. So I'm, walk, I'm wrong. So walk right. down, go to the, the beach. beach. Nigga, I ain't gum, motherfucker. I was popping gum and smoking cigarettes. Okay, good. What the fuck you talking about? Okay. I was popping gum and smoking cigarettes. <laughs> he really wants to open up the other level is if you it's, guarantee it's that there's going to be a certain amount of people. How many people will you Especially guarantee? Especially because if you know E class, E class does not get angry. But he was popping gum and smoking cigarettes, motherfuckers. So he was, he was a little angry that day. And all blasted MySpace, Facebook, Evites, and their databases. Same. It's almost par for the course. If a big event like this, at least one DJ doesn't get to play. My, my battery's about to die. I have to charge him. I think I need to go grab some people from other venues and just let everyone know to come here for Thursday and Friday. Yeah. You know, Heim said that if we fuck tonight yeah, up, then Thursday and Friday is done. Yeah. He will not days. open for Thursday and Friday. And then I get to be the homeless Canadian in a foreign country um, with no money and no place to live. We refuse to lose. Bring it on, bitches. The ride in here to pick us up. This night has to go well, and it's not starting off very well. What's up? Here, man. It's gonna be a long night. Our doors open in 20 minutes. It's 9.40. We have one of our own girls doing the door. I can't leave the cash tonight. No one's robbing her. Look, <laughs> I wouldn't fuck with her. This is where it really gets interesting. Party and do drugs. Yeah. That's where all the money goes. There's no cash yeah. in the till yet, but I still need to protect it. You know, you're thousands of dollars in debt by the time the night rolls around. You pay DJ deposits, you pay transportation. Now you want to break even. So you got 300 people coming in for the night at 20 bucks a piece. That's six grand if you sell out, you've already spent four. So it's not a lucrative business, but sometimes it hits. I think right now we got about 200 people in the venue. It's a good start. It's Wednesday conference. I think it's going to build. There's a good momentum. People are having fun. What are you guys here to see tonight? Yeah. David Dan! Woo! He's here for him. Right on. Everybody's here for David Dan. Yeah. The venue owner has closed off the entire area in front of the stage to basically keep people near the bar to buy alcohol. You're a crazy motherfucker. This is it. It's going to be a good night. I have a feeling. I love it. WMC, bitches.
believer in sacred integrity because if you spin that out, it fans out yes. like a spider web. Yes. And yes. people who don't even know that you've affected them in that way, a week from now will say, what's that cat? Michael is the team's professional videographer. He's a California lifer, not to mention the man who ponied up 10 grand to make sure the week of events got off the ground in the first place. Originally there to do behind the scenes footage, Michael noticed the drama unfolding in front of him and is the reason you're watching this film today. The enormous risk Michael took investing the money can be measured by examining the stress he displays. He's got like a stoic yet capable of snapping persona who gravitates towards Buddha statues in an attempt to sedate the madness around him. Please, please, Michael, please. ready? Lock and load it, no problem. Michael has like the easiest it's job. Two individuals from our nightclub were fornicating in the back of the manager's vehicle. Miami Beach Police Department arrived on scene. Let me get my cuffs out right now. Our camera caught some of this taking place. You know, while it's easy to laugh at it, it can be a little bit risky because that kind of thing can lead to lawsuits. We didn't know at the time if the guy was assaulting her. We didn't know if she was slipped something like G or K. And it's happening at our event. So when our camera got down there, you know, actually, I don't think that he was assaulting her because he was trying to please her. <laughs> so there's not too many, uh, usually rapists like to get in and out and be on their way. And I, he was all into foreplay. So, I, I, you know, I think there were just two drunk people. One who can't get it up and the other just wants cock. Another fucking night at the office, my friend. This evening is brought to you in part by DoNotTellMyMom.com. You know, things like that can happen. Um, cops can come and just shut down the night. If the night gets shut down, then all of a sudden the club owner just pulls the plug and points a finger at us saying, you know, what kind of shit show is this? So we were lucky. Uh, we dodged a bullet with that one. Strong team skank. Stop it. All right, there you go, Lorraine. At the end of the event, we looked at the cash. I mean, we were short. I don't even remember, but it was thousands of dollars short. I think there was a few hundred bucks in the till. So Nick and I then had to sit down with the management companies, and we were just honest with them and told them, you know, we don't have the money right now. That it was the longest 10-minute meeting I've ever been involved with. And they looked at us, and they were like, are you fucking kidding me? Are you joking? And we're like, nope. There's nothing you can do at that point except just say, no, I don't have the money. Look at the caked, the cake. See the, everyone, do you see it? The, the corner of my mouth there? Yep, that is pasty mouth from cocaine. Just let everyone know, just full disclosure on that one. There we go. And then hope that they're not a little bit more hard edged than, than you are. Alcohol and women are key when you're going to Hello Miami. 5 a.m. in Miami. 5 a.m. business. Oh, what's up, what's up? Hello Miami. Now with Danny and Lewis from Grassroots, they were calling, they were emailing, and for 72 hours, we just put the brakes on all communication. I don't regret doing that, actually, because they wanted to know every little detail, but yet they didn't have anything to give us. And as a partner, they weren't really holding up anything on their end. They were acting like they were our bosses because they put down some money for the venue on the Friday. So they felt that they had ammo to tell us what to do. Three days, that's 72 hours, where we just didn't answer any of their emails or any of their phone calls because the only thing that we could say to them that was relevant to our situation is we have no money. And as soon as you say that, then they would have just pulled the plug on everything. Um, yeah, I, I, think, uh, I think that's a good place to actually stop it. This is like literally right in the middle of the film. Um, Scott, what a good job you did to, to like emphasize the stress and the drama. When people say that when they when they when people say that um you know that when they watch this film they feel like they need a volume at the end of it. A lot of that, it, I mean, it's it's what happened, but a lot of that is the way that you put it together and the way that 
Joe Kramer scored it. I mean, I, I couldn't have like, you know, emphasize the stress as as well as as you and joe did i don't know if, th if that that part there is like that that's that midpoint of the film where it's like it needs to hit hard and i think you did a really good job with that i don't know like if that part drove you nuts or if that was one of the easier parts but uh god it's so long ago again 10 years ago um i mean all i had with was a little bit of you know those two black eyed peas guys or the, were they managers or i don't know they were they the were. they were grassroots they were the managers and then there was like david uh i always forget thank his you name. Leanne. um but the the um one of the dj's there is literally like one of the top dj's on the planet and um david get uh Geddon? david getta david getta that's it and i thought he was a homeless guy <laughs> When I saw him at the venue. I was like, "Is he wearing like track pants and a golf shirt?" And I was like, uh, "Who are you?" But he walked in with uh, DJ uh, Steve yeah. Ioki. Yeah. So I was like, "Okay, well, Steve Ioki is like a world class DJ." And then I found out who it was, and it was like, "Oh, it's David Guetta." Oh, why does he look like a homeless person? I don't know. Um, yeah. So I'm gonna stop the film there. So I'm gonna. I'm just gonna like take this out. Um, listen. Um, Scott, I gave Scott the invite, everybody, to, to be on this podcast about an hour ago. So um, thank you um, for coming by. Do you want to come by tomorrow when E-Class is here? Of course. I'd love to see him. I haven't seen him since I gave him his award for Phoenix Film Festival 10 years That's ago. Right. Yeah. I, you know <laughs> what? I'm going to... I'm going to load up some of those assets and, uh, and, and tomorrow I'm going to show some of the pictures from the, cause I mean, the film did win awards. Um, thanks to you, Scott, really. And, um, you know, but this has all been kind of an experiment. Um, you know, th this whole podcast, watching a documentary, talking in and out of it, um, telling everyone how much I think Ariel is a fuck stick, you know, like all of this is just off the cuff kind of stuff. But, um, you know, I appreciate you coming by. I'm going to let you go. I'm going to I'm going to stop the podcast in about two minutes after I um, talk to the audience a little bit. Um, but we'll see you tomorrow. Yeah, uh, I'll be here. Just give me a reminder. I, I will. I will. I'll text you or something. Thank you, Scott, for coming out. I appreciate it, buddy. Thank you, everybody. Hi. Um, yeah. So this is going to be a learning process. I, I, I was talking to somebody earlier today um, and I was thinking about doing this. I think once a week is a little ambitious, but like once a month playing an indie film with the documentaries, not documentaries, whatever, just anything that we can play where we won't get sued or we won't have production houses coming after us or whatever. Um, guys, let me know what you think, you know, like uh, talking to like somebody while a film is, whether it's a drama or, or a documentary, um, is this something that could work? Cause I, I'm just sort of, this is a trial and error situation. And um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm appreciative of the encouraging comments because, um, you know, it's just one of those things that I'd like to, you know, do if it works. Um, and I wasn't kidding. Uh, in the video that I put out before I went live today, um, I, I, I didn't book any guests this week. <laughs> so that's what prompted me to try to figure out, well, what the fuck? Because you can't rank in Canada. Um, I don't know if it's the same in the States if you don't have four or five podcasts a week. And so when I don't have guests, I'm like, I don't want to sit there and make people, um, you know, make people, you know, listen to my voice for half an hour or 45 minutes or whatever. You know, I get tired of that. Uh, so I don't like to do shows that are completely solo. Not sure if you guys have noticed that, but I rarely ever do that. I think I've done that twice. But um, yeah, this is something that I think I, I, I want to continue to do. It's not obviously going to be this movie ever again. This is just what I started with in my beta testing phase. Um, but part two, I'm going to do tomorrow. And, um, you know, I, I think, uh, you know, I hope you guys join. Like, again, uh, let me know what you think about this. Retweet it, guys, if you want. Um, you know, and let people know that part two is coming tomorrow. You totally don't have to do that. I don't even like asking people to do that. But, you know, this was an experiment. Um, I am so appreciative of the audience that um, tunes into the Dean Blundell show. Um, all you guys, Melissa, Emil, Rhiannon, I don't know if you're a boy or girl, um, Leanne, obviously, um, all you people, if I forgot someone, I'm sorry, but you know, you guys are really, you know, you're always there and, uh, and I really appreciate it. Um, so yeah, so this was part one of we run shit tomorrow uh, at seven o'clock. I'm going to be joined by Scott 
Storm, again, the director and animator that you guys met tonight. Also joining us is E-Class, one of the coolest people I've ever known. Uh, and we're going to talk our way through the the, the second half. Um, you know, I, I, I might interject more. I might interject less. I don't know what's going to work, guys. So I, I'm relying on you to sort of help me, guide me through that, what, what works and what doesn't. Uh, I'll try not to do it too much. Try not to, like, try to be funny all the time because that... When that doesn't work, it sucks. Um, but I'm going to leave you tonight with um, with the Black Belt video. I'm going to start doing a little bit of that kind of stuff more often. Um, and we'll see you tomorrow at 7 o'clock on Black Belt. Thanks, guys. Thank you for having me. Look, journalism is dead. We'd all rather take selfies now than learn to comprehend. Look, I despise those colorblind, those self-absorbed reporters, those whores who suck the content for all the media hoarders. Those producers, man, they tap dance for the conglomerate's quarters. They exploit polarization, and it's done through gender, race, and borders. And meanwhile, they sell a sphere, meds, and weapons every hour, leading bleeding screeds of misdeeds, but shit, none involving power. Those outlets, they insist they don't exist for shit clicks? Fuck, man, them pricks, they diss this writer like I was on some mysterious hit list. And the cable news, that's the villain. And I don't want to be mainstream. That's where fake dreams hit snakes and devils all up on the end scene. Know what I mean? A leg up into the armpit of all that corruption? Shit, this relationship, I think it's destined for a mutual destruction. Terror, mayhem. Nah, I know. I'll cool it with them jays. But you better send your fucking eagle and meet the talons of this goddamn osprey. Why? <laughs> I've been blackballed before Now I have to be my main source Looking out my front door Cause I've been blackballed But now I am older I know I have to keep on moving forward Never look over my shoulder We live inside a landscape where editors are predators And writers get shelved and never properly mentored Never cease to increase the pressure of the mighty pens releases I defeat your fucking arsenal with a single chess piece Bless me, the non-believer Fuck commies and libertarians and conservatives Liberals, anarchists and presbyterians Fuck left-wingers, right-wingers, throat singers, salesmen The hacks who got rocked by that mentally impaired kid I hate all of you Find the button, press play Abort the next generation Spare us from the next wave And let's not blur the lines of yesterday Just vibrate to your street Why psilocybin sensei It's true though Whether it's Trump or Justin Trudeau Though. New clothes for those who lie straight face Then kudos to faith base Race baiters, you guilty Shameful haters Pull the plug, your cross fader is filthy You milk these new breeds of dummies Who promote racism and then cry to their mummies MAGA, woke folks fight to a mutual death And no one's left to foster divisions after the last breath Now fucking die already Seriously Oh but wait, one more thing Bring your newspapers in case we all run out of confetti I've been blackballed before now I have to be my main source Looking out my front door Cause I've been blackballed But now I am older I know I have to keep on moving forward Never look over my shoulder I've been blackballed Black, 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 black